Welcome back. I'm Curtis Smith. Today we're in Lee County with the Lee County Extension Service Master Gardeners. We're going to look at some of the problems that people on the east side of the state are having at this time of the year. Marsha Groves is one of the Master Gardeners and she's going to show us some of the things she brought in that are good examples of problems over here. What do you have? In my greenhouse I have these impatiens that are growing in the ground and we have a a little bit of escargot here. That's a problem. They like to eat plants. Do you eat the escargot? No. I don't think I would either, <laughs> so I'm not recommending that. But it's a problem. And in greenhouses, it's a year-round problem. Outside, it can be a summer problem. But in the winter, it's not so much a problem. It's something you've got to deal with. There are a number of things you can do. Some of it's pretty toxic. Do you like to use the less toxic type of controls? Well, if I can get away with it, I'd prefer not okay. to use herbicides or pesticides. Okay, there are some uh, molluscicides, which are very toxic, which could be used. But there's some other things you could try first. First, uh, turtles eat snails. They also eat the tomatoes. Yeah, they'll eat your other plants. <laughs> and so they may not be the solution in your greenhouse. They might. They can't get up on the benches. So uh, they may help uh, control it to some extent. But if you can't use that, there's also another type of snail called the decollet snail, which is a predator snail that eats snails and snail eggs. And so it will reduce the population. Now, it will also eat some plants. I see. But it's not going to build up to the same population that you have right now. So it limits the amount of damage. I see. And they'll eat themselves. They're cannibalistic. So when all the other snails are gone, they limit their own population through cannibalism. So that'll help. But then there's another bait product that you can buy that contains iron phosphate as the active ingredient. Iron is a nutrient that our plants need. Phosphate's a nutrient our plants need. It's good for the plants not toxic to us, not toxic to birds and pets. So it's a safe product to use. It's not quite as effective as some of the more toxic materials. Would it be as effective as the snails that eat snails? Uh, it probably would work in combination, but if the other snails eat the bait, it's going to kill them. So you oh. might first use the uh, iron phosphate. And okay. it's, there's different trade names for it, but just look for the active ingredient, iron phosphate. That would probably be mm. a little cheaper, too. It'd probably They'd be a little cheaper. It's difficult. The snails have to be uh, mailed to you. And sometimes mm -hmm. they die in transit. I know people who've had to try three and four times to get the snails in alive. And so it's a lot easier to you know, go with the other control first. Okay. And then once you've got things down, maybe then you use the snails as an ongoing control. You just might try that if you want. Okay. If you get enough control with the iron phosphate, that's good enough. If you can once get it under control, I think you'd have pretty good luck with it. Just getting it under control. Getting it under control is going to be hard, though. They're real hard, especially in a greenhouse. You've got all your pots. Their eggs are in the bottom of the pots. The snails have crawled in there. It's <laughs> in the soil. And so you probably think you get it under control, and then they show up again. Really so weird. it'll be an ongoing battle. Okay. Okay, you brought some other things. I have an elephant ear plant that's got aphids on it pretty good. Oh, boy, does it. Oh, but look at that, though. The solution's right here with the problem. Yeah? What you've got, if you look at this, there's some little aphids that are all swollen up, tan colored. They're uh -huh. dead. And inside them is a little tiny wasp developing. There's a yeah. parasitoid wasp. It comes and lays its egg in the living aphid. As that egg hatches, the aphid dies. And the aphid just grabs a hole real hard. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you can go out with water and wash off the living aphids, but the, par the uh, little aphid mummies, we call them, are hanging on so tight they stay. But that little wasp will develop inside there then cut a little circular hole in the side or in the back of the aphid, come out and go lay more eggs. And with the number of aphid mummies you see on this leaf, you've got pretty much everything parasitized. So the aphids are in trouble. You've well, got the solution now. One of the things that I like, I've been doing, is I'll make a solution with uh, biodegradable soap mm -hmm. and get it on there and you want to make sure and get the aphid dew and all of that off of it. But I wouldn't want to do that with this, correct? You want to be careful using insecticides if you kill the aphid now, you kill the wasp that's right. developing inside it. Right. And right now, since you've got these parasitoids developing, you do want to take care of those. Right. So uh, no hard insecticides if you can avoid it. Now, if you've got other problems, mealy bugs and other things developing, and you're not getting things under control, you may have to go to that. But uh, what I do is take some of these plants that have it, move them somewhere so they're not going to be in the area where the insecticides are, and a little bit later bring them back mm -hmm. so that you bring the parasitoid back in. Right. And it's a good biological control method. Uh, it's not going to kill everything like insecticides do, but when you kill with insecticides, pests come back and they come back strong. With this, what it's going to do is just keep the level of pest at a low level. Sometimes just enough that going in and washing things off with water periodically is enough to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've tried to bring beneficial pests into the 
greenhouse. Do you think I might have brought this in? You're, you're purchasing some? some? Okay. Yes. Uh, very well might have come in in that. I didn't know that this one's available on the market at this point. It might be. It would be easy enough to do. So it could very well be that you bought this and put it in your greenhouse. And it's possible to reintroduce them if you lose them again. Okay. And I see you, oh, I looked at that and I saw you had snails on your elephant ear leaves. You see those silver tracks that They're they leave behind. Up. These guys really get around, <laughs> don't they? But if you control them on, in one area there, it's going to save all the plants in that same area. Okay. What else do you have? I see some chilies. I think these have aphids. Okay, more aphids here. Well, if you've got this in the same area, you've got the same control developing. Okay. So they're going to take care of it. What's interesting, a lot of people think you can grind up peppers and kill bugs. Oh. The aphids are eating the peppers, aren't they? Yes. So we want to say, um, probably not going to be working here. Of course, they're not on this little part. They're not on the, the hot part. So it may be. So uh, they're not bothering the hottest part of the pepper. Well, Marcia, thank you. This is very mm -hmm. interesting. People on the east side of the state will probably find this very useful for them as well. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.